Now, finally, we go to the sad news of the passing of the writer Dermot Healy, who has died at the age of 66. A versatile writer, Dermot published novels, short stories, plays and poetry. He is survived by his wife, Helen, and two children. Filmmaker and author Neil Jordan has been telling me about his friend, Dermot. Well, I got a phone call last night. I was really shocked, you know. I mean, he was far too young and far too good, far too brilliant, too, far too necessary a voice to have vanished like that, you know. I mean, Dermot had an accident. Dermot and his wife, Helen, were driving in a car, and they had quite a bad accident in Sligo, I think, about a month or six weeks ago. And I think it shook him very, very severely. You know, he was a great friend of mine, and he was a great writer and a great kind of imaginative figure. So he'd be sadly missed. As you say, a necessary voice, a great writer, to look first, perhaps, at the man himself. What kind of a man was he? Dermot. (laughs) <laughs> it's very hard to describe. He was a very absolutely intriguing person, you know. He was like, uh, he was from Cavan. He grew up in Cavan Town. I think his mother owned a, a cake shop. And he was uh, brought up by his mother and a bunch of these wonderful aunts. Uh, aunties, I mean, not A-N-T-S. And, uh, you know, he was this extraordinary figure. And you just wondered how on earth did he, did he ever emerge from the kind of small town rural environment that he did emerge the first thing i read by him was uh, a story called banished misfortune uh, i think that was would have been around 1970 72 or 73 and it was an extraordinary piece of work you know and it kind of it presented his entire world in one one amazing quite long short story and it uh, you know presented irish realities in this wonderful kind of magi- magical realist light but uh, you know, Dermot, all, all, he always seemed to come from a, another kind of more extraordinary planet than most people. An extraordinary uh, creative talent uh, that somehow, while remaining attached to his roots, somehow managed to transcend them, was never confined by them. Well, he, uh, his first, he, he was first discovered by Seamus Heaney, actually. Uh, I think Seamus published a, an anthology called Soundings, was it? Or it was an anthology for Faber of New Irish Poets and... Um, I think Seamus mentored him in some way towards, you know, as, as when, he, when he started writing poetry. Then he began to write prose, and that's when I came across him, you know. And he moved to Sligo then. He spent a long time in Belfast, actually. I think he used to live in the Shankill Road or something like that, through that, those awful periods where, uh, you know, there were murders and bombings going on, and there was all those sectarian killings. And, uh, you know, Dermot seemed, he was one of these characters who seemed to have a have a kind of a protective glow around him that enabled him to move between communities and meet people in all sorts of different walks of life, even in that horrible time, you know. He was, he was a very interesting man, Dermot, very brave, very bold. And, I mean, he encompassed a lot in his all-too-short life, and uh, he wrote, wrote about a lot as well. And when he finished in London, he moved to Sligo, where he lived, which is where you are from originally. How did your paths cross? I had a publishing outfit in the early 70s called the Irish Writers' Cooperative. And uh, it was a very difficult time for people, for people to get published. You know, there wasn't the, uh, the glitter and the excitement around young, new writers, new voices as there is now. And uh, I was just trying to search out people who had interesting things to say and interesting pieces of fiction. And that's how I came across Dermot. And he's, he was one of my closest friends, actually. And, you know, we've, we've kind of grown up together over the years, you know. So it was, it was a great shock to hear that he died last night. He was, a, he was the kind of writer who didn't recognise any rules and didn't see the need to obey them, you know, and uh, it led to some great stuff, some great work. And having written his novels, short stories, plays and poetry, that body of work survives. How will you best remember the man himself, Dermot Healy? Well, I remember him as a friend, actually. I remember him as somebody who I used to go up to see up in, up in uh, Sligo, you know, I'd drive through Ross's Point where I was apparently born, I've been told, and I'd make my way out to Ballyconnell and he had this little cottage perched on the edge of a, a cliff that always seemed to be on the point of being subsumed by the Atlantic, you know, and he had an ass, he had a donkey there who he used to have conversations with, he used to call him the ass, and uh, I'll miss him a lot actually, but it, he'll be missed by literature really, you know, because he, sh- he should have had the opportunity to write a lot more. Neil Jordan on the passing of Dermot Healy, who has died at the age of 66. Sarjeste Gorev Anam.